The ATLP7 fully manual belt drive turntable is a precision instrument designed to complement Audio Technica's innovative VM series moving magnet cartridge line and includes a pre installed and aligned VM520 EB cartridge. Before you can use the turntable, it needs to be set up. Carefully unpack the turntable and verify that you have all of the parts and accessories. Install the platter and drive belt. Carefully place the platter on the spindle and make certain it is fully seated. Slip the drive belt around the platter and gently attach it to the exposed motor pulley. Make certain that the belt is not twisted. Rotate the platter a couple of revolutions by hand to self-center the belt. Next, assemble the tone arm. Remove the twist tie and temporarily secure the tone arm to its rest with the locking clamp. Attach the head shell with VM520EB cartridge by inserting it into the tone arm socket. While holding the head shell in position, rotate the head shell locking ring counterclockwise. As the ring rotates, it pulls the head shell into its seated position. Tighten carefully. Install the counterweight, making certain the black stylus force gauge dial is oriented toward the front. As you rotate the counterweight, it will thread onto the tone arm. Now we will balance the tone arm, set the tracking force, and adjust the anti-skate for the VM520EB cartridge. This important process allows the cartridge to track properly, and failure to do so can cause the stylus to wear prematurely and possibly damage your records. First, set the anti-skate adjustment knob to zero. Make certain that the stylus protector is lowered, protecting the stylus. While gently holding the head shell to stabilize the tone arm, carefully release the locking clamp. At this point, the tone arm is unbalanced and can easily swing. Be careful not to drag the stylus across the platter. While gently holding the head shell, rotate the counterweight until the tone arm is horizontally balanced. It should hover freely just above the platter and not touch the platter surface. Once the tone arm is balanced, without touching the counterweight, carefully move the tone arm to its rest and secure it using the clamp. Now set the stylus tracking force to the manufacturer's recommendation. Every cartridge has a manufacturer's recommended tracking force. Setting the tracking force too light can cause the stylus to skip out of the groove on loud or dynamic passages. Setting it too heavy can cause excessive wear on both the stylus and records, resulting in audio distortion or channel imbalance. The recommended tracking force for the VM520EB cartridge is 2 grams. Locate the black stylus force gauge dial. Marked with numbers and lines indicating different tracking forces, the dial can rotate independently of the counterweight. Without turning the counterweight, Carefully rotate the stylus force gauge dial until the zero on the dial lines up with the center line marked on the top of the tone arm. Now set the tracking force by rotating the entire counterweight assembly in a counterclockwise direction. As you rotate the counterweight, note that the gauge dial rotates with it. Continue turning the counterweight until the two value on the gauge dial lines up with the center line mark on the tone arm. You now have set the tracking force properly for the VM520EB cartridge. If you ever change out the cartridge, remember, you must rebalance the tone arm and reset the tracking force to the value required by the new cartridge. The ATLP7 has an anti-skate force adjustment. This small outward force can be applied to the tone arm to compensate for the natural skating force that pulls the tone arm toward the center of the record. For best performance during normal turntable operation, set the anti-skate adjustment knob to the same value as the cartridge tracking force. When properly set up, the tone arm is parallel to the record surface. If you are playing thicker records, adjust the tone arm height. Loosen the tone arm anchor lever and using the height adjustment dial, raise or lower the tone arm as needed. After adjustments are complete, tighten the tone arm anchor lever. For best performance, the turntable should be level. Using a small bubble level, adjust the turntable's feet as needed to make certain it is level. With the turntable assembled and leveled, the power and audio connections can be made. First, connect the AC power adapter to the turntable and plug it in to a convenient AC outlet. 
The ATLP7 provides a traditional phono output along with a built-in magnetic phono preamp providing an RIAA equalized line level output. This makes it compatible with traditional phono inputs on amplifiers and receivers, along with AUGs or line level inputs on powered speakers, amplifiers, and other audio equipment. If your audio device has its own RIAA magnetic phono preamp, simply set the phono line output selector switch to phono, bypassing the turntable's internal preamp. If you are connecting to an AUGS type line level input or powered speakers, place the output selector switch in the line position to use the turntable's internal phono preamp. If your audio device has a separate ground terminal, connect the spade lug on the dual RCA cable to the grounding lug on your audio equipment to help minimize hum. The ATLP7 turntable can also be used with moving coil cartridges. For moving magnet cartridges, including the VM520EB, make certain this switch is set to the moving magnet MM position. Should you choose to install a moving coil cartridge, set the switch to the moving coil MC position. The turntable's dust cover is designed to protect the turntable when not in use and should remain off when records are playing. For more information, visit us on the web at www.audio-technica.com.